Yes, sir, it's de -er because we're going to be talking about de -er and how to use de de -er. This is a little part of audio post-production and EQ that can be really helpful, but again, it's not something you need to use in every single project. The idea behind a de -er is that it takes away some of the sibilance in your audio, which are kind of those high S, -S sounds and even some of the higher frequencies. So. I have an example right here that I've recorded into Adobe Audition. Soup and salad sound stupendous. Look at all these sibilants in this sentence. Now the microphone I'm using right now is actually a really well balanced microphone, the Rode NT1 fifth generation. So it doesn't have too many issues with sibilance normally, but the way that I spoke and my voice kind of being a little bit higher and more nasally could potentially cause some of those sibilants to pop out. Other microphones like the Rode Pod mic, for example, it's a great microphone, but this microphone really emphasizes the higher end of the frequency spectrum. And that means that it can also make sibilance more pronunciated. There's some sibilance right there. Now, as per usual, I'm using Adobe Audition for this because it does have a specific de -er, but it is a basic part of EQ and most editing applications have a way to handle de -essing. Even the Rodecaster Pro has a built-in de -essing, so it is a very, very common thing. And if you are using an application that doesn't have a specific de tool, what you can do to de-escalate that crisis is use the parametric equalizer and you can kind of just narrow down those specific frequencies and get rid of them. But it's always kind of nicer when you have the software do it for you. So again, here is our raw audio, our radio. Soup and salad sound stupendous. Look at all these sibilants in this sentence. And if you are using Audition, there are two ways you can add effects. One, I can double click on the audio here and bring up just the audio, or I can go back into the multi-track editor and use the effects rack to add in some of the same things. The effects rack is great if you want to add a bunch of stuff and keep changing it later on. This view is great if you want to sort of focus on one specific track. I'm going to use this right now because I like that I can show the before and after. Not that we'll really see a huge difference in the waveform here, but we might be able to see something. So all we're gonna do is go right here to amplitude and compression and then check the de -er. Now what you'll notice is this little window pops up and when I play my audio, you'll see that it sort of points out a specific part of the audio. This is where it's focusing on de Essing. There are different modes, there are even different presets. You can focus on certain frequencies, you can focus on certain types of voices, or you can even just click and drag this to focus on whatever you want. We could try to DS the whole track if we wanted. Salad sound stupid. That actually sounds worse than anything. Let's start with a low voice de -er. And I think that's gonna be a pretty good part of the frequency spectrum. And salad sound stupendous. But I'm kind of having a hard time seeing for sure. So what I can do in Audition is check this box that says output sibilance only. And that means we're only going to hear essentially the stuff that it's affecting. And salad sound stupendous. Now that sounds really bad. And in this case, we actually want our audio to sound bad. We want to find the worst, most sibilant sounding part of this audio. Those are some very unpleasant frequencies. So now if we uncheck that box and now we de-s it. Salad sound stupendous. It sounds a little bit better. We can play with the threshold. Salad sound stupendous. There are no silver bullets when it comes to which settings to use in something like this because there are so many variables. So a lot of times you kind of just need to poke around and see what sounds best. Your ears can get fatigued if you edit for a long time and you start EQing things for a long time. So sometimes you need to just step away for a bit, come back with a fresh set of ears and re-listen to what you've done. And you might find that even though you thought you were using a light touch, things now sound very over-processed. And now what I can do is play this back while turning the de -er on and off so you can kind of hear the difference. So we'll start without it, and then I'll add it as the audio plays. Soup and salad sound stupendous. Look at all these sibilants in this sentence. Now, if you're using an application that does not have a built-in de -er, let's look how to do that with the parametric equalizer. I will turn off the de -er here, and then I will go into filter and EQ and add in a parametric equalizer. And this is what we've seen before. But instead of going through the whole thing and looking for frequencies that I don't like, what I'm going to do right now is kind of focus right here on the high end. We're going to make this a very narrow range of frequencies. And we're just gonna kind of play and poke this around till again we hear the most unpleasant sound. Soup and salad sound stupendous. Look at all these sibilants in this soup and salad. 
right there, you can hear a lot of the sibilant sound. And I can then just take this out, not necessarily all the way down. Stupendous, look at all these sibilants. But maybe I will take it a little bit and then widen it out. Soup and salad sound stupendous. Look at all these sibilants. And another way if you don't want to use software to address sibilants is to use a really thick windscreen. So you will notice if I'm using this microphone with no windscreen, this is what it sounds like. But if I put this on, you can hear that it kind of did muddy up my voice in a little bit and dull it down. It did reduce the propensity for plosives, but it also sort of tamed some of those high end frequencies. And I actually kind of like the way that this sounds on this microphone. It's like I did some analog practical EQ with the microphone. And as I raise and lower this windscreen, you can hear the difference that it's making in reducing those high end frequencies, which also then could seriously stop some of those sibilants. Seriously makes quite a big difference. So again, if you're using a microphone like the Rode Pod mic, sometimes just putting a windscreen on it can really, really save the day. I get a lot of these colored windscreens from a website called reporterstore.com and I'm not associated with them at all. They're just great and have a lot of options and they're really colorful.